This is the story of Eastern Airlines Flight 935. On the 22nd of September 1981, Eastern Airlines Flight 935 was to fly from Newark to San Juan in Puerto Rico. The plane that they'd be flying was Lockheed's L-1011, arguably one of the most sophisticated planes in the sky. You could even say that the L-1011 was a bit ahead of its time. On that day, by about 10.57 a.m., the plane got its taxi clearance and began to taxi to runway 22 left at Newark. In a few short minutes, the plane was airborne and was climbing away. So far, so good. Nothing concerned the pilots about the plane. But as they passed through 800 feet, something caught the pilot's eye. The fan of engine number two, the one in the tail, was vibrating a bit too much. The airborne vibration monitor, or the AVM, had activated momentarily. The flight engineer was checking to see if something was wrong with the engines, and as far as he could tell, all readings were in the green. Nothing to be worried about. As they hit 1,000 feet, they pulled back power on the tail-mounted engine, just to be safe, as per procedure. Since the L-1011 had three engines, they'd have more than enough power to climb away on two engines. But shortly after that, the pilots got another warning from engine number two, this time an oil filter pressure warning light. The plane was telling them that there was a big pressure differential between two sides of a filter. This could happen if the filter was blocked by something. Taking no chances, they pulled engine number two back to idle, and the captain asked the flight engineer to carry out procedures in the abnormal procedure section of the flight manual. As the flight engineer scanned the instruments, everything still seemed okay. The oil pressure was 50 psi and they had 15 quarts of oil in the system. Those values were exactly what the pilots were expecting. A few moments later, the pilots re-established climb power and began the climb from 2,000 feet. Up to this point, they had been holding at 2,000 feet. But as they passed through 10,000 feet, an explosion rocked the L-1011. There was no prior warning, and the cockpit panels lit up with warnings like a Christmas tree. The flight engineer did not like what he was seeing. They had lost engine number two, the one in the tail. But losing an engine is not a death sentence. But they had also lost hydraulic systems A, B, and D. Now that was a problem. You see, the hydraulic systems move the huge control surfaces on the jet. If you lose the hydraulics, you have very little control over your jet. And the crew of Flight 935 had just lost three of their four hydraulic systems. In the cockpit, the crew sprung into action, shutting engine number two down and carrying out the multiple hydraulic system failure checklist. They discharged the fire bottle in engine number two as a precaution. The pilots knew that they were in deep trouble. They requested an immediate landing at JFK International. The controllers instructed the jet to dump fuel. Slowly, the weight of the jet started to fall. It went from 393,000 pounds all the way down to 345,000 pounds. At that weight, they would be able to make a safe landing, but the weight of the plane was far from their only concern. The loss of the hydraulic system had crippled the plane, so to speak. The captain and the first officer noticed that their rudder pedals were jammed in the neutral position. Moreover, the control authority of the elevators and the ailerons were significantly impacted. This meant that, to get the plane to do what they wanted it to do, they needed to use something known as differential thrust. For example, if you wanted the plane to turn right, then adding more power to the left engine would put the plane in a right bank. If you wanted to turn left, then adding more power to the right engine would do that. This is not standard procedure. This is what you do when you have exhausted all other options, and it is very hard. Somehow, the pilots coaxed their wounded jet down and made a safe landing at JFK International. The interesting thing is that despite the damage, the captain was able to taxi the plane to the gate and all on board deplaned normally. Looking at the damaged plane, the investigators found that the fan shaft in engine number two had failed. This had some near disastrous effects on the plane. With the shaft broken, the fan assembly was able to move around and it moved forward by about 12 feet until the spinning fan impacted the S-duct. On planes with tail-mounted engines, you have something known as an S-duct. Its main purpose is to funnel air from the outside to the engine as the engine is inside the body of the plane. The spinning fan blades also damaged the rear bulkhead of the plane. 
but the real damage was done to the hydraulic systems of the jet. When they inspected the hydraulic systems, they found out that A, B, and D hydraulic systems had all been torn open by the disintegrating engine. Luckily for the crew and all passengers on board, hydraulic line C had only been dented. Had the last line been breached, then controlling this plane would have been way more difficult than it was. Maybe even impossible. When the investigators tore the engine down, they eventually got to something known as the Low Pressure Location Bearing, or the LPLB, which is basically a bearing in the engine. The investigators were quite surprised to find that the seals built into the LPLB were all worn down and the bearing system itself was quite dry. In fact, there was evidence that the LPLB region had gotten so hot that it caused metal to melt. They traced this dryness and all of this heat to a lack of oil flow in the LPLB. Apparently, a leak had been introduced into the system after an overhaul and there just wasn't enough lubricating oil in the bearings in the LPLB. There was some oil flow, but not enough. This meant that the bearings were starting to get hot and that caused them to expand, which caused the bearings to fail. Now, this failure of the bearings moved things around in the engine and that axial movement further reduced oil flow into the region, causing a huge buildup of heat. With internal temperatures rising and the engine beginning to tear itself apart, seals all around the engine were beginning to fail. The loss of one particular seal meant that the oil and air was allowed to mix, and in the very hot engine, the oil caught fire, which weakened the shaft that eventually broke almost taking the entire plane down with it. Even though the fire was in a major risk to the plane, the forward movement of the engine really made life hard for the pilots. Remember how I told you that the fan blades impinged on the S-duct? Well, the engine kind of pinned the walls of the S-duct against the rudder control cables, essentially making the rudder useless. Sadly for the pilots, the design of the very plane that they were flying was working against them. The hydraulics were designed in such a way that one small problem in a part of the plane wouldn't take out multiple hydraulic lines. But, apparently, no one thought of the engine ripping itself apart and shifting 12 feet to the front. So, all the hydraulic systems kind of bunched up at the back of the plane, meaning that one failure at the back had the potential to take out all four hydraulic systems. The only reason that this crew didn't lose hydraulic line C was sheer luck. If the particles that impacted it had a bit more kinetic energy, they would have lost everything. Just to put things in perspective, here are some things that the last remaining hydraulic line powered. The horizontal stabilizer, a few of the ailerons, a few of the spoilers, the slats, the landing gear, and the alternate braking system. Do you think that they would have been able to make it back if they had lost their last hydraulic system? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Delving into the history of the Rolls-Royce RB211 engine, the investigators found that this wasn't the first time that this had happened. They found out that there had been about 0.024 failures for every 1,000 operating hours. To put that another way, from November of 1978 onwards, there had been about 7 instances of fire in the LPLB due to bearing failure. In those 7 cases, the shaft overheated in 6 instances and the shaft completely failed in three instances. But in those cases, the engine that failed was engine number three, the one under the right wing. This crew lost engine number two, the one at the back, and it nearly took the entire plane down with it. Well, the last thing that we need to look at is the crew. Could they have done something to prevent all of this? Well, to be honest, the crew is kind of in the dark about this. They had an intermittent vibration warning and then an oil pressure warning. There wasn't anything that jumped out of the crew suggesting that there would be an imminent engine failure. The rotation speeds in the engine were normal, exhaust temperatures were normal, and they did pull back power on the engine as per procedure, but nothing really told them that their engine was about to tear itself apart. Given the situation, Captain Adam C. Cagle, First Officer Richard B. Donica, and second officer John L. Barrett did an absolutely incredible job of getting the plane back on the ground. 
they definitely did save 201 lives that day. Had it not been for those men, this video would have been a lot more somber. Thank you for watching this episode of Mini Air Crash Investigation. If you like the videos that I make, do consider liking and subscribing. It will really help the channel grow. I will catch you guys next time. Stay safe.